Second Life still happening. And I've um, been wanting to do a lot of videos <laughs> in Second Life. I have yeah, more for posterity and history, but uh, Second Life has been actually enjoying a little bit of a comeback uh, with younger people, and that's great. Um, my time in Second Life, one of the greatest joys I've had in it is programming. And I think it was around 2006, 7, 8, 9, I went mad with it. And the programming language uh, for doing things in Second Life is uh, named LSL, Linden Scripting Language. And uh, you know, it's the uh, successor to C and a lot of other common programming languages, so not that difficult to learn as it was very well put together and documented everything very cool and you know what do you use scripting for well let's say a simple example might be you want to create a candle and so then you want to ha be able to allow an avatar or anything to uh, touch it to uh, light it or, or unlight it or if you want to allow an avatar to say uh, flame on and flame off and all those sort of things. So what you do is you put these scripts inside of objects. So like a candle would be a cylinder and uh, the flame would be a little uh, animation. You could do various ways. But then you would put the script in the cylinder part of it uh, and, and it works like that. So one of the things I'm quite proud of is, um, is some of the creations I made uh, of gauges and time clocks. So I'm going to go up to my workshop here and take a look at some of the clocks and just a quick look at um, what it takes to make one work. So let's see here. To kind of figure out things as we go blind <laughs> a bit. Let's see. I'll just take that on. And here we are in the uh, bared down workshop. I used to have a huge one. This is all I have now. Um, it's just a platform that is at 2,000 meters. Um, this is a, a little model of my Dow Lodge house. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's just for fun display. Um, the main thing here for this particular video is uh, to look at the gauges and the clocks. And I guess we'll start with um, just a quick look at a few of these and then we'll go in on one element to show uh, what it takes to make these things work. This is one of my, I made some lunar clocks and they're based on real calculations um, that are used to animate the, uh, the needle. Uh, in this case, we can see this is, uh, you know, what is it, July 17th, 2020, and this is the, the current state of the moon. Um, actually, this might not be a bad one to look at uh, to show the programming. So this object is basically, it's a, um, a rectangle in the back, and that's all. That's all it is. It's just a box. And on that box, I have applied textures. And we can see that by right clicking on this and we can go into um, edit mode I haven't done a lot of this of late and then we can uh, say the object and we can say select faces and we can see the different um, textures that we used you can see the whole face of it is just one texture um, but now to get to the part I wanted to kind of share is the programming behind that. So we look at this. Now we know that it's just a, it's just a cube that's been squished into a rectangle to make this clock face. A texture has been applied on the front of it. But there's another element and that's this, this this needle here. Now what we do is we say edit linked and um, go into that we see the content we can see moon time that's a script in linden 
uh, LSL language uh, that I wrote to work with this, uh, this design. And if we go into that, this is just a quick, this is a pr very simple script. What it does is it is going to rotate that needle on a certain axis. So, you know, I, even if you're a non-programmer, I think I can walk you through this a little bit. Uh, basically, I wrote this in uh, 2007. Oh, my God. And what we do, a default thing will be that you uh, set a, t a timer event. And then we set up this, um, this is the formula that's basically based on Unix time. And this I got somewhere. And um, what it's going to use is use pi as a calculation to make the rotation. All these subsequent lines here are just a lot of um, my notes. Then here we can see rotate, uh, rotation, hand rotation. And this is a really... <laughs> took a long time for me to figure out how to get this thing to work correctly. Um, but that basically is going to uh, do the calculation for the phases of the moon. And then you can see here this last thing, it just says set local rotation to hand rote. And that, all of this is um, within the object in this object. So this script will animate that object. I mean, you can do anything you want. You can use this to make a vehicle with uh, tires that are spinning or whatever. Or clocks, as I've done, and also other gauges, which I'd like to show. Um, so that, um, for the record, is a little bit about um, Second Life programming, and also a little bit about these gauges and clocks that I have made uh, in Second Life. and. Um, hopefully soon I'll going to follow up because some of these clocks are pretty cool, but not much different than, you know, um, than what I just showed you, but with some more complexity, they have menus where you can reset the clock and move backward and forward in time, move the hands back and forth and whatnot. So Second Life is still a joy to, uh, play around in and... I might as well, as I said, do some historical um, recording. Yes. So be it.